In this video, we will learn about setting up the IV fluids on pump. Let's review about the IV therapy first. IV therapy is a standard part of patient care and every nurse will be spiking and priming thousands of IV bags in their careers. So now the goal is to deliver an intravenous solution or medication into the patient's bloodstream via tubing. It can be achieved with the help of IV pump or via gravity, which can regulate the flow of solution. In this video, we are learning about the pumps. So before we move on and learn about the pumps, let's just talk about the simple things which is spiking the IV bag. So spiking the IV bag means you will be penetrating the IV bag with the spike of an IV tubing into the spiking port of the IV bag so that the content can flow into the IV tubing and then into the patient. Afterwards, what you do is called as priming the IV tubing. This means you will allow the solution in the IV bag to flow through the tubing to remove air. All the air must be removed from the tubing to prevent an air embolism. So that's super, super important. And always remember to label your tubings with date and time because tubings, they also expire. And then we have to follow the hospital protocol or guidelines in order to change your tubings. CDC recommends that changing IV tubing that is used continuously, not for the blood products, but for the simple IV infusions, has to be changed minimum every 96 hours. And the tubing which are used for blood products, your TPNs and fat emulsions, they need to be changed every 24 hours. However, please follow your agency policy. Let's move on and learn the steps on how to spike and prime an IV bag first. Always make sure you wash your hands. And it is always best if you can wear the clean gloves during this part so that you don't get contaminated with the medication while spiking or priming. And then you open your tubing package and unkink it. Then roll the clamp to the closed position. This is very, very important. And lots of nurses and IENs, they make mistake here. Date and time the tubing so that you don't forget it at the end. Open the IV bag packaging and hold the IV bag in your non-dominant hand upside down and you will see that there are two ports on the bag. A medication port is which you won't be using and then you will see a spiking port. Pull the stopper off spiking the port and always make sure that you keep the port opening sterile and don't touch it. Then you remove the spiking sleeve. Again, don't touch the spike. Then you spike the IV bag by inserting the spike into the spiking port and then you will hang the bag on the IV pole. Afterwards, squeeze the drip chamber until it's halfway full. Then unclamp the roller and allow the solution to drain all the way through the tubing. Analyze the tubing and make sure that there are no large air bubbles. If they are, then you have to try to flick it or reflush the line to remove every air bubble the possibly you can. Clamp the tubing shut with a roller clamp and now it's ready either to go into the pump or setting up via gravity. Let's learn about the smart pump. In this video, we'll be demonstrating Medical Pump 360 device. It's a smart pump, meaning that you can have your hospitalized, customized medication formulary uploaded into this device via the MedNet safety software. This software prevents the medication and IV programming errors. So let's just learn about this pump. This pump has some physical features. So let's just look at those physical features. So you can see that there is a tubing line guide A and there is a tubing line guide B. Then you can also see that there is lever which goes up and down. This lever opens up to load the cassette into the door. We'll review that later. Let's just look into the soft keys. So you can see the soft keys are called as those number keys. So let's just review. You can see that there is a blue soft key, which is to turn your pump on and off. Then you can see that there is a green soft key, which is to let the fluid flow. And then there is a red key, which is to stop the fluid. Apart from that, you can see that there are alphanumeric keys. And again, that it can be used to code 
and of course setting up any medication which is prescribed by the physician. Then we have the arrows button which can also use to select the different kind of variety of medications or the CCAs which means the different units the patient is admitted on. So these are all the soft features. Once you're ready, you wanna make sure that you are also ready with your prime tubing. And just want to review, the principle of the priming remains the same. However, we use a little bit different tubing for the pumps. So we use Plum 360 tubing in here, and that has a cassette, which I've already talked about. So in this cassette, you also wanna make sure that cassette is also flushed and primed nicely, and there is no air bubble in it. So how do you do that? Let me show you. So when you are doing your priming of the tubing, you want to invert that clave. So it's basically below or upside down. And then right there, there is a knob. It's called as the flow regulator. We are going to pull that out to start our priming. So priming will slowly move down the tubing up and into the cassette. Once it's filled, this round portion called the air trap, then you want to invert it again so that your clave is now in the upright position. Fluid will then continue to move down your line and once it gets to your clay, then you want to tip and tap that part to knock any air that may be in there and then it's protected and cap it. We'll fill it up with the fluid so that you can keep it sterile until when you're ready to hook it up to the patient. Once the tubing is primed, now you are ready to load the Plum 360 cassette. Now open the lever and slide the cassette into the door. Now close the lever door and now you're ready to program your infusion pump. Once you turn your device on with the blue button, it is going to run through some diagnostic first. It is normal for that pump to do that. After the diagnostic, the first question the pump will ask you, is this a new patient? So let's just suppose we're going to hit yes. And afterwards, you will see the CCAs. CCA stands for the clinical areas which we are talking about. So you can see here, if you're working in ICU, medicine, surgery, so you can scroll down and choose the area where you are working. Afterwards, you can access the drug library. So here, I'm going to choose IV fluids. And then I will be using the soft keys to set up the rate. So let's just assume here, we are going to give 125 ml per hour to our patient. So you need to understand that your IV fluid is going to be your primary line A. So you will be pressing the soft key, which is underneath the line A and then you'll be selecting that. Afterwards, as it's a smart pump, you will be inserting your VTBI. VTBI stands for volume to be infused. So let's just say we are going to give to this patient 1000 ml. And now you will be also inserting down below is the time. So let's just say we are going to administer this as per physician's orders in eight hours. So your VTBI in this case is 1000 ml and your time is eight hours. So once you do this, as it's a smart pump, it is going to do the automatic calculation and you will see it will show you the rate, which will come down to 125 ml per hour. Once you're happy with the setting and it matches the physician order, now you're ready to connect your IV tubing to the patient and you will be hooking that up to the saline lock, but make sure that you clean the saline lock minimum for 30 seconds before you connect the primary tubing. Once you do that, you wanna ensure that all the tubing is unclamped because the pump is going to automatically regulate the flow and then look for any kind of alarms or the beeping sound the pump is gonna make. It can be associated if there is any kink around the patient or surrounding area, or sometimes there can be alarms associated with the air bubbles. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to connect the primary IV tubing set to the pump and also how to attach the tubing to the patient. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for more videos and subscribe to our channel. Hello nurses and nursing students. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about IV pumps. What's next? Let's just practice some NCLEX style questions associated with the skill. Here is the first scenario on your screen. The nurse is setting up IV tubing with a pump for a client. Which action should the nurse prioritize? These are your four options. Pause the screen and think for yourself what's the answer. Option number A, check the expiration date on the tubing. Well, this sounds tempting. However, this is incorrect here because this action is important, but is not the topmost priority during setting up IV tubing via pump. 
the primary focus should be ensuring a safe and accurate setup for the infusion. Look at the option number B here. Prime the tubing with IV fluid prescribed. And that is correct. This is the priority. The IV tubing must be full of IV fluid prior to attaching to the client. I hope you guys learned that in the video. Look at the option number C here. Administer IV medication through the tubing. And that is incorrect. This is not the priority during setting up IV tubing with a pump. Look at the option number D. Increase the pump rate to infuse fluids more quickly. What do you guys think? This is incorrect because increasing the pump rate without proper assessment can lead to complications. And it is not the first action during the setup. All right, I hope you guys are enjoying learning with us. Let's just move on to question number two here. A nurse is setting up an IV pump for a client who is septic and requires multiple IV antibiotics. What is the best action? Here are your four options. Pause the screen and think for yourself which one is the answer before I discuss. All right, option number A, mixing all antibiotics in a single mini bag to save time. What do you guys think? That is incorrect. Mixing up of all the antibiotics in a single bag can lead to incompatibilities and is never considered as best practice. Look at the option number B here. Administer each antibiotic separately using different tubing. What do you guys think? That is correct and this is the best action we need to follow. Look at the option number C here. Flushing the tubing with heparin before administering antibiotics. That is incorrect guys because flushing the tube with heparin before administering the antibiotic can lead to compatibility issues and is not a common practice. Option number D here, increase the pump rate to infuse the antibiotics faster. What do you guys think? That is also incorrect. Increasing the pump rate without proper assessment can lead to complication and it is not the primary action when setting up multiple medications. All right, if you guys are still enjoying, let's just do one more question here. A nurse is preparing to administer a high alert medication through an IV pump. Which action is crucial before starting the infusion? Here are your four options. Think for yourself, which one is the answer before I discuss? All right, let's just discuss option number A. Administer the medication as quickly as possible. What do you guys think? That is incorrect. This action is not a best practice and can lead to complications. Option number B, check the compatibility of the medication with other infusions. And that is correct. This is the most crucial before starting any infusion that this action is a part of right medication. Option number C, setting the pump to the maximum allowable limit. That is incorrect. Setting up the pump rate to the maximum limit without considering patient's factors is unsafe and is not recommended. Option number D, using a larger needle for faster medication delivery. Do you guys do that? No, this is incorrect. Using a larger needle is not the solution. Proper infusion sets should be used and it does not address the imperative need for compatibility checks. Okay, so let's just move on to the another question. I am having fun. I hope you guys are too. Here is the next question on your screen. Nurse is caring for a client with an IV pump. When assessing the client's IV site, the client reports pain at the insertion site. What is nurse's priority action? Here are your four options. And think for yourself which one is the answer and pause the screen. All right, guys, let's just discuss option by option. Option number A, apply a warm compress to the insertion site. What do you guys think? That is incorrect. This may be an appropriate intervention, but is not a priority action and should follow a thorough assessment of the site. Option number B, administer the pain medication through the IV tubing. This is incorrect. This action may be necessary. However, it is not the priority. It will follow an assessment of the IV site after stopping the infusion. Look at the option number C here. Stop the infusion and assess the site for complications. What do you guys think? This is the correct option. This is the correct priority action to be taken by the nurse. And look at the option number D here. 
increase the pump rate to complete the infusion faster. That is incorrect. Increasing the pump rate without assessing can lead to complications and is not the priority action when addressing pain at the insertion site. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed learning clinical skill as well as NCLEX style question practice. That's what we do at FDNPC. We are always here to support the students and make sure you contact us if you have more queries. Please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, share it with your friends. Thank you very much.